that everybody knows the, the, the definition of empathy, and I would guess that you don't, because when I actually started to do the research, I found I didn't know one thing, where it says down here, either the past or present of somebody without having the feelings, thoughts, and experiences fully communicated, meaning you just have to be able to feel it. You have to be able to have an emotional connection without someone necessarily telling you that. And I guarantee we all go to work every day, our kids go to school every day, There's, if you're a teacher you see students, and you know just by looking at people many times, things about them. You know, and are we really looking? Are we really listening? And I think when I grew up, and the reason I'm so impassioned about this is I think we just weren't. Now amazingly with this story, uh, this young man um, spent three years at school trying to figure out how to get out of the school every day to avoid the bullies at, at the end of school because he would have to walk a mile to school every day and a mile home. And the minute that he left the front and started down the path as he turned the corner, they'd be waiting for him because he was out of the way of eyesight. Another problem with bullying is that it happens out of eyesight. You know, as adults, we'd like to be there. We want to believe that we could be there. But, you know, the bullies aren't, aren't stupid. You know, they're going to pick the right opportunity to do it. So this particular boy, uh, they always pick the right opportunity, which was after. So every day he would go into the bathroom, he'd spend 10 minutes waiting, then he would come out, go out the side door into the woods, and then he would traverse these woods, that were not short woods, all the way around to that path, and up that dirt path, and then he could go home, every day. And for two years, this was incredibly successful. No bully after school bothered him for two years. And so when I thought about this story, I, I thought about how long did that take? And it was the 10 minutes in the bathroom. It was out the side door around the woods and up this dirt path. And that was a half hour, a half hour of time. And this clever young man who felt pretty good for two years, uh, we did some math. And say there's 200 something days of school. So for two years he did this. And what he lost this clever young man, it was eight days of his life to doing this. But there was one big problem. Robert was a lot bigger than this boy. Robert was a lot scarier, and this boy knew Robert because of their friendship and had a deeper fear of Robert uh, because of it, because of what he knew about him. And so Robert started uh, picking on the boy, and then he started threatening the boy. You know, notes were passed, I'm going to kill you. Things were said about the harm that was going to be done to this boy. And every day the boy got more fearful. And finally the boy said, you know, the only way I could possibly defend myself in this situation, the only way I can feel secure, because I can't fight him, he will, he will kill me. And literally at this point, that's the way he felt. After all the bullying that had happened to him, that's the way he felt, is that he would actually be killed. And so fear enough took him to start carrying a weapon to school. And then to, to boot, he told, he told them, I'm going to carry this weapon, don't bother me. And the fear is so palpable to the victim sometimes that it causes them to do things. And we know what it causes them to do to themselves sometimes. But it can also cause other things, such as, you know, feeling the need to bring a weapon somewhere or use one or 
or have a psychological break possibly? And do we really want people to get to that? Is that really what we're trying to do? Because you should know that these stories that I'm telling you are my stories. Now, I'm considered an emotional person. That's sort of my thing. And I, I've tended in my career to move that path. And I think emotional people tend to be victims. We tend to get victimized because we, we are emotional in all cases. Um, but that's not a right for someone to pick up. But I couldn't place him, and I wrote to him and I said, hey, I put this picture of you from my bar mitzvah on Facebook, just wanted you to know because I found it. And he writes back this really long thing, Alan, the saddest day of my life was the day that you moved. Well, I remember this, that, the other thing, all these, all these things he remembered. I was like, God, that sucks. It really sucks. Why can't I remember him? Why? And I struggled with it, and I struggled with it, until finally he wrote me again, and he said, Alan, I have to be honest with you. He goes, when I said it saddened me, it's because I was never able to apologize for that fist fight we had right before you left. He said, and it's haunted me for all these years, for 30 years, and I needed to tell you how badly I felt, and I needed to apologize for what I did, for, because for me it was a sin for all the things I thought about and did. And I just want your forgiveness. And I'm so sorry. And I realized I couldn't remember because at that point, I finally hit something I didn't want to remember. One good thing at the very end, at a very dark period that went bad right before I moved. And then I felt for him, you know, because it's not a one-sided deal. And you know, 30 years later, he said, two weeks before I was just thinking about this, it's so weird that you contacted me. And for me, it's just, what a benefit, what a blessing that he's not the first one to have done that, that I've been able to contact again. But what a great thing to know that we can get forgiveness. And so the first thing I did was forgive him.